Which dragon is the biggest? A dragon the size of a house cat versus one the size of a 747 jumbo jet. Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon have featured both tiny and huge dragons, and I'm here to show you just how much of a difference there is between these dragons, comparing the sizes of some of our favorites such as Drogon and Balerion the Black Dread. Most of all though, I'll show you which dragon is the biggest out of all of them we know about, and here's a hint, it's not Vagar or Balerion the Dread. One thing to keep in mind with these size comparisons is that most of the measurements are estimates from the television series or based on secondhand descriptions from A Song of Ice and Fire or Fire and Blood, so there may be some slight discrepancies between what we see in House of the Dragon and the rankings to come. Anyways, let's get into it. Starting off with the smallest and one of the youngest dragons to ever live, we have The Last Dragon. This was the last dragon alive following the Dance of the Dragons, and at its death, reports claim it was either the size of a cat or up to the size of a small horse. Either way, this dragon was small and sickly with misshapen wings. While its name is not known, this dragon was the last to live before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen's dragons, all three of which were quite small in comparison to older dragons too. Up next is Viserion, the smallest of Daenerys Targaryen's dragons, named after her brother Viserys. He could be distinguished by his cream and gold-colored scales and his red-orange wings. Eventually he was killed and became enslaved by the Night King. He was also able to breathe blue fire that was even capable of melting the wall. Slightly larger than Viserion is Rhaegal, the second largest of Daenerys' dragons, named after her brother Rhaegar. He could be distinguished by his green and bronze colored scales and his yellow-orange wings. Jon Snow rode Rhaegal at the Battle of Winterfell and fought his undead brother Viserion. Later Rhaegal was killed by a bolt shot from one of Maester Kyburn's scorpions. Next up is Drogon, the largest of Daenerys Targaryen's three dragons, named after her late husband Khal Drogo. Drogon was the largest dragon alive at the time and he grew up to the size of a small commercial jet. He can be distinguished by his black and red colored scales and his red black wings. He was also Daenerys' personal mount. With the deaths of Viserion and Rhaegal, Drogon was the only known living dragon in existence at the end of Game of Thrones. Up next is Morning, a younger dragon hatched during the Dance of the Dragons, ridden by Lady Rhaena Targaryen. Morning's scales were pale pink but with black horns and crest. She was one of only four dragons to survive the Dance of the Dragons, and by the time of her death, she was much larger than Daenerys Targaryen's dragons. Next is Tyraxes the dragon bound to Prince Joffrey Valerion during the Dance of the Dragons. In the end, it's said that Taraxes died by strangling himself with his own chains while in his lair in the dragon pit. The next largest dragon is Arax, ridden by Prince Lucerys Valerion during the Dance of the Dragons. Arax and his rider were killed by Prince Aemon Targaryen and Vhagar in the skies over Shipbreaker Bay. Three days later, Arax's head washed up beneath the cliffs at Storm's End along with Prince Lucerys' corpse. Up next is Vermax, known for his hatred of snow, ice, and anything cold. Prince Jacaris Valerion rode Vermax in battle, and he's well known for his ferocity during the battle in the Gullet. There, Vermax attacked a fleet of ships, but he flew too low and went crashing into the sea to his death. The next largest dragon is Sea Smoke, ridden at first by Sir Laenor Valerion, and later by the dragon seed or illegitimate Targaryen, Adam of Hull. After Laenor's death, Sea Smoke made his lair on Dragonstone for almost a decade before bonding with Adam of Hull. Sea Smoke was later killed in battle by Vermathor when he locked his teeth into his neck and ripped his head off. Much more ferocious than Sea Smoke, Tessarion is the next largest dragon. Also known as the Blue Queen, Tessarion's wings were a dark cobalt, while her claws, crest, and belly scales were the color of bright copper, and she was ridden by Prince Darren Targaryen. Tessarion was later put down after a battle that left her in deep pain and too weak to fly. Up next is Sunfire, also known as Sunfire the Golden, a male dragon ridden by King Aegon Targaryen II. In fact, the three-headed dragon in the Targaryen sigil was made golden to honor Sunfire. This dragon had golden scales and shot gold flames, and he was known as the most beautiful dragon to have ever lived. Sunfire died after receiving heavy injuries from battle before refusing to eat and starving to death. Up next is Grey Ghost, the first wild dragon in our list. Grey Ghost was the name given to him because of his pale grey-white color and because he mostly avoided people, preferring to feed on fish. Because he never lived in the dragon pit in King's Landing, Grey Ghost was considerably larger than most dragons, although not larger than the rest of the dragons in this list. The next largest dragon is Quicksilver, ridden by King Aenys Targaryen I and his son Prince Aegon Targaryen. For some reference, Quicksilver is one quarter the size of Balerion the Black Dread, and he was killed by the very same dragon during the battle beneath the god's eye when Balerion ripped Quicksilver's wing from his body, causing him to fall to his death. Up next is Cyrax, featured in House of the Dragon and ridden by Prince Rhaenyra Targaryen. Cyrax was named from a goddess of Valyria of the same name. Many of the facts about Cyrax's life are uncertain, as well as her death, which there are numerous and contradictory accounts of how she eventually died. 
We'll have to wait and see how her story plays out throughout the series to see the official account of her life. Next is Melis, also known as the Red Queen, written by Prince Alyssa Targaryen and later Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Melis had scarlet scales and pink membranes on her wings, for which she received her nickname. At the height of her strength, Melis was known for being one of the fastest dragons to have ever lived. Melis eventually died in a battle with Vagar and Sunfire, where she fell to her death. The next largest dragon is Caraxes, nicknamed the Bloodworm, written at first by Prince Aemon Targaryen and later by Prince Daemon Targaryen, also featured in House of the Dragon. Although he was only half the size of the huge Vagar, Caraxes was fearsome, strong, and experienced in battle. He was known for being one of the largest and leanest dragons alive at the time, and he was twice the size of Tessarion. Up next is Dreamfire, written by Princess Rhaena Targaryen and later by Prince Helena Targaryen. Dreamfire was slender and pale blue in color, with silver and blue wings. She eventually died during the sacking of the dragon pit when she flew into the dome above, cracking it and causing it to tumble down, killing the dragon slayers below under tons of broken stone and rubble. Next is Silverwing, written by Queen Alysanne Targaryen and later by Ulf White during the Dance of the Dragons. She is known for being one of the most docile dragons, even acting quite friendly towards strangers. Silverwing's death is unknown and after the Dance of the Dragons, she lived out the rest of her days as a wild dragon. Slightly larger than Silverwing is Sheepstealer, a wild dragon with a taste for mutton, for which he earned his nickname. One of the largest dragons alive at the time, Sheepstealer could be identified by his mud-brown color. He was eventually mounted by a young girl named Nettles, who made Sheepstealer comfortable with her by giving him a sheep to eat every morning. The next largest dragon is Vermithor, nicknamed the Bronze Fury. Written by King Jaehaerys Targaryen I, Vermithor was three times the size of Tessarion. Vermithor could be identified by his bronze color and great tan wings. Later, he died in a battle with the dragons Tessarion and Sea Smoke. At five times the size of Arax and two times the size of Caraxes, next up is Vagar, written by Queen Visenya Targaryen during Aegon's Conquest. It is said that Vagar's breath was so hot that it could melt a knight's armor and cook him inside. By the time of the Dance of the Dragons, Vagar was the hardened survivor of a hundred battles, had grown almost as large as Balerion, and was the oldest and largest of the dragons in Westeros. Her roar was so powerful that it could shake the very foundations of Storm's End. No living dragon could match her for her size or ferocity. The next largest dragon is Meraxes, written by Queen Rhaenys Targaryen during Aegon's Conquest. It's said that Meraxes was large enough to swallow horses whole, and she was slightly larger than Vagar. Up next is Balerion, nicknamed the Black Dread, written by King Aegon Targaryen I during his conquest. Other known riders of Balerion were King Maegor Targaryen I, Princess Arya Targaryen, and Prince Viserys Targaryen. His wingspan was so large that his shadow could engulf entire towns when he passed overhead. His teeth were said to be as long as swords, and his mouth was large enough to swallow a woolly mammoth whole. Estimates put his length at over 125 feet long and his wingspan at over 450 feet wide. Balerion was one of very few dragons to die of old age during the reign of King Jaehaerys Targaryen I at 208 years old. While many people believe Balerion to be the largest dragon to ever live, there is one last dragon that may be greater in size. The final dragon in this list and the largest to ever live is a wild dragon known as the Cannibal. This dragon made his lair on Dragonstone even before the Targaryens came to Westeros, making him at least 243 years old at the start of the Dance of the Dragons, the oldest dragon to have ever lived. He was noted to be as large or larger than Balerion by the time of the Dance of the Dragons, and he only grew larger as he aged. Estimates put his length at over 175 feet long and his wingspan at over 600 feet wide, twice the size of a football field. The cannibal had black scales and shot black fire, and he earned his nickname because he would feast on dragon eggs, younger dragons, and dead dragons. The cannibal was one of the four dragons that survived the Dance of the Dragons, but he vanished after the war, so there's a small chance he could still be alive at the time of Game of Thrones. Since the maximum lifespan of a dragon is unknown, there's potential that the cannibal continued to grow for hundreds of years out of sight from any living person. While many of these sizes are based on secondhand stories and estimates, it's still crazy to see that at the height of their power, dragons exceeded the size of a Jumbo 747 jet and shrank all the way down to the size of a house cat. It'll be great to see just how large some of these dragons are in House of the Dragon, and I can't wait to see if we get to see any shots of the cannibal in live action. But please, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, check out the video on your screen for some more of my content. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching Rocket Riley.